Now we start. Good morning. Here we are. Lynn Christian with the sister up group. Woo! Woo! Krista? Woo! Not, you know, yeah, texting someone. We're... This is okay. not a demonstration of not how to be distracted. She's actually. No, here is, here is the thing is that I just think we need to start off with a little <laughs> something. Like, are we ready? All right, all of this win, 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 win. Because all we do is win, and goes up, up, down, and the same way up, and up, down, up, down, up, down. And all we do is win, and that is like our favorite song. Can you hear that song? No, we can hear it all. But you can certainly see us moving. Just know that T Pain and DJ Collins are in the house, and anytime we're together. All we do is win. win. I mean, that's just all we do. All we do is win. So thank you for letting us win with you today. <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome. So some exciting things happening with Sister Up. Yeah. Yes. We've launched a podcast. Yeah. And um, I personally know that you guys have been in search of that thing. Yeah. Like, where is the platform where this dynamic duo stands and then raises the world's frequency, you raise the energy? You raise the heartbeats to a higher, I guess, maybe even a transformative level. Wow. Wow. Well, thank, thank you. you. Well, yeah. one thing I will say is that, truthfully, I mean, this all started probably, and, and you were definitely at the start of it, too. It started, Lindsay and I are sisters, so we've known each other our whole lives. Um, and we're here <laughs> two years. Four, well, I oh, haven't no. been alive that long, right. but close. Uh, she's the older sister. Uh, but we, <laughs> we have always, even though I'm taller and bigger, and was always a bigger sister, but... Um, we that's have a whole other always, topic. yeah, that's a whole other topic that we'll get into later. But we have always known because we were raised with all sisters, right? So there's right. five girls in our family, and that there's this power in sisterhood, and we experienced that growing up. Even though we had a lot of trauma and, and kind of crazy upbringing, we experienced that power, and we knew that it was something that could connect the world. And so we had always had this idea of like, okay, how do we work together? You know, we both worked in separate careers, and it was about Five years ago, I was actually um, working with you. I think I got fired from being a client of yours because I never showed up. <laughs> <laughs> so Shannon, it's so a successful kindly. story. It <laughs> is a successful story where Shannon said, "If you don't show up, we fire you." Yeah, you <laughs> have not showed up for a single appointment. <laughs> All right, you so keep paying us. You pay us every month. We will gladly take your money. But, but we're out of our integrity if we keep going. And I think it's because you know when you have that. I, I don't. I so. That like still small, right where, where you know in your head, yeah. you know like you can feel like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to do to be my true self, but it's too hard to do it. Like at the time I was working in a crazy career and like was very successful, I'm like, I can't do it. I know that Lynn's going to ask me. Yeah, you knew your truth and I was going to hold you yeah. accountable, yeah. but you weren't ready to do the accountability. Wasn't part. ready to do the accountability. And, th and that's actual thing. Yeah. And it's you actually know? probably common. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's why our tagline is know your truth and live it. Yeah. And sometimes you could know it. And it is common yeah. that you're not ready. Like how many times, and, and you in the audience, yeah. and I've had this, where you knew the relationship was over, but you weren't ready to end it. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow you needed to untangle a few things, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so we did fast that. Forward, here fast we are. forward, here we are. So, so yeah. Sister Up uh, finally launched uh, probably four years ago. And we've pivoted a lot. You know, I love, you use the word pivot a lot. When we first started, we started as something that looked very different than what Sister Up is today. And I think that when we pivoted to finding this like podcast and really finding like kind of to you know your whole thing is like own your truth and live it like you said and read that <clears throat> oh you read it critical entrepreneur tip avoid the, if I build it they will come it's trap. a trap it's instead build a portion prototype or beta test to see who comes who you are what it feels like I love that yeah so what you did is you experimented your way through there. Yeah. And yeah. you were earning and learning and struggling and standing up again because we don't we don't reinvent no. it with our head. Right. We have to get in there and play with it and experiment. You guys did that. Take You're action. a perfect example of having to take action, find out what works, what doesn't, and listen to that inner plumb line. Yeah. To yeah. know we've landed on. Yeah. And our inner plumb line actually when we started Sister Up, um, I guess four years ago. Um, there was many years of um, Krista calling on her way home from work saying, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit, I'm going to mm. quit. And uh, me saying, 
You should. You should. <laughs> <laughs> That's sister that's chat. That's that's sister that's chat. chat. That's I'm just like, I'm going to hold space for this conversation I that we're going to have every day. But when we did start, um, because both Krista and I have corporate ex- experience in public relations and marketing and advertising, and then um, I was an entrepreneur for many years, but we knew that we wanted to figure out how to use all those talents yeah. to help female entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So when we started, we were helping female entrepreneurs do their marketing and public relations and their business strategy. Uh, So that through line that you talk about, of like we were supporting women, um, Yeah. and our focus then was more on the business side. And so what we've evolved to now is that we, Sister Up, um, our podcast, is really these vulnerable and powerful conversations that we were having with each other. When you were driving down from work and you were saying, yeah, yeah I yes. should quit, and you were saying, well, you should. You should. Yeah, so you talk about in full circle. Yes. You know, sometimes, uh, and this happens a lot with entrepreneurs and uh, like you, and also people that are reinventing that haven't gotten the entrepreneurial spot yet, the thing that they've always been is the thing that's called them out to be it now. Yeah. 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 And that's what you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah. So with the podcast is about intimate conversations behind the scenes, behind the stories, and I had the pleasure of being able to be interviewed by you. Yes. Yeah. You're yeah. our first guest. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, you know, just kind of um, what we wanted to make sure the conversations that we were having, you know, we see everyone's highlight reel. We see like, oh look, now Lynn has this successful coaching business. And, Which is uh, amazing. Which is amazing. amazing. But what about all of those moments that you had to go through to get to this point and you will continue to have to go through um it's not like you did them and then you're done i've done all the you know stuff that's done all the hard stuff yeah Yeah, i'm good (laughs) yeah well i think that's the hardest part is that people often aren't saying these are the really 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 hard things by the way those hard things are the things that connect us because I think that oftentimes when we're in those hard things, there, there may be people listening right now who are in the battle. And, they're, and it like makes me cry because they're like in that battle and they can feel so all alone. And they feel like, well, I'm looking at these guys and look how happy and successful they look. I promise you, like we've been there. And everybody gets a, everybody has a moment in that, right? And those moments come up and down. Yeah. And that's what we want to talk about. And that's what we want to focus with on our podcast. Is it's those moments where you can feel, the listeners can feel like, I'm not all alone. You know, Lynn went through, there's there's a moment in our podcast uh, that I love. It's actually one of my favorite quotes that I think that we've had on the podcast thus far. But in it, it's about uh, minute 40. And you are talking about this really, really painful thing you, you uh, have gone through, like tremendously like painful. And you say, when you're in, when you're willing to walk through the bottom of the shit pond and you have no snorkel and you have no face mask and you are going there, that's when you never want to inflict that pain on anybody else. And I think that's so powerful because sometimes we can feel like, well, it's so-and-so's fault, or so-and-so did this to me, or so-and-so is making me feel that way. And we are, the, the only thing we can control truly is how we feel about something, right? We can't control what happens to us. Right. We can't control the terrible things that happen to us, but we can control how are we going to feel about that, and then what are the actions we're going to take from it. Right, and also, I think, you know, that's such a moment, too, that we, I think we pulled it out. I actually think it's at the beginning of the podcast. Um, we talk, You talk about those moments where you go so deep and you're in such pain yourself. And later in the podcast, you talk about family members that had basically betrayed you and harmed you. And I, I remember saying, like, well, how did you just hold space for them? How do you not just, you know, not hate them or you know just really despise them and you basically that that thing that Krista said is you know when you feel your own pain and you've been in the shit pond and you've walked through it you don't ever want to inflict that on someone else and who and it was I think you said something like who am I to do that to someone else because I know how horrible it feels um and yeah I didn't even get like teary I just think I know I'm all teared up I know but your your podcast um, you know, the first podcast we did was us talking to each other. Oh, yeah, I love that. Um, why you're doing it. Why we're doing are. it and kind of, you know, where we're at. And then we knew that you needed to be the first one. Oh. Um, because you're, you're, you're so authentic. <laughs> your story is so powerful. Um, 
uh, just even being vulnerable about talking about, um, you know, coming out at the age of 40, around 40, maybe a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're only 30, so I'm not quite but, sure how you came out. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> I only 30 times too. <laughs> uh, but we, those are the conversations that it's just holding space for people to share those experiences and also make, knowing that it's a safe place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think with so much competition and social media and everything where you don't feel like you can show up as your true self because. Um, everyone else doesn't feel like they're showing up as their two so. Right, right. So, well, and I think that's a distinction that you guys play. If you listen to the podcast, there are so many people, like Lindsay said, we play big uh, by portraying whatever it is we want. I mean, we're very clever at building a persona online. And uh, I, look at my, I look at my Instagram feeds, and I, I'm probably my Facebook, and I'm about the same that I was a year ago, because I'm not out there trying to get an audience. I'm just working and living my life. And I look at other people and they're building something. It's almost like an empire. And I think that's so ethereal and trans, it's, it's not even transparent, but it's so, what do I want to say? It's like, it's like a balloon. Yeah. Yeah. It's very vulnerable and it can pop in a minute. Yeah. As soon as electronics are gone, as soon as you lose your phone, let's say the internet's down. All of your influence is gone, and that persona that you built is gone. And so what you did in your podcast is, and what you do is you show, they show that they're, yeah, you can have the highlights reel all over the internet. Yeah. And you can put on a persona when you go into public. But the gritty uh, shit pun moments when you have no snorkel or fins, no face mask, and the only way through it is through it. Those are the stories that you share because when you are a real person and not a Pinocchio, a wooden person, <laughs> yeah. not a Barbie doll in a plastic case, when you're real, you come up to those times where your toes are dangling over the edge and it's scary yeah. and you have to decide what to do. And so I applaud you for the sort of stories that you're bringing forward, allowing me to, to share part of my story. You know, the one thing about my story, if you listen to it, is... It's okay to hold space for other people and understand where they're coming from and also make a stand for yourself of where you're coming from. So my story is not about just leaving space for those people who had abandoned me, who had emotionally been abusive, who had been mean, <laughs> by my standard, very mean, yeah. um, and to understand how come they did what they did and recognize that I could still hold a space for them to have that opinion, to have that truth, and here is mine. And then the, the idea is how do we find mutual success? Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to convert to me. By them, I'm not going to convert to your side. I've already extracted myself from that thought. But how do we find something in the middle? And, well, and, and I, I think, think that's I think that's something that you guys find too is common ground yeah. and where is mutual success? Well, I think it's about finding courage, right? Yeah. I think that every brave moment that anybody's ever had right is is because fear exists I, I love that quote where it says that in order for there to even be courage or to even have to act brave there has to be fear right we have to, to really really be afraid and courage is not the absence of fear yeah right exactly it's it's right in the face of fear and i think that for a lot of people that can say and you've probably heard this like wow you were so brave that you did that it's like listen I was brave for that moment. I had 10 seconds of bravery is really what it felt like, right? Sometimes we, we do these hard things. Where we're like, no, I had 10 seconds of courage. That's all I had at that moment. 20 minutes, five minutes, yep. 10 seconds. 10 seconds, that's what it took. And sometimes that's all it took. Yeah, sometimes that's, that's all. all it takes. I remember when I quit my job, right? I, I was going to quit on 11-11, which is double touch up to the universe. So originally I don't touch up. So I was going to quit on 11-11, and it was September 3rd. At 11-11. For 16 years and I remember it was September 3rd and I, I like literally like my I couldn't, I couldn't go anymore I was like the plastic your, was your, so tight yeah, their body was saying and I remember here. thinking wait but it's not 11 11 and I had five seconds literally of courage where I blurted out like I was being yelled at for something and I blurted out like I quit and I was so shocked by the bravery that I had and the courage that I had that it like took me back I was like wait it's not 11 11 like I, I'm three months early but that, that was all the, I was premature. <laughs> what is this? I was premature. But like that's what it took. And I think for a lot of people to know that it, it's not only brave people. We, we are all brave. 
in real time. Yeah, and it just is like and it just looks a physical different. exercise, yeah, right? right? We have to flex that courage muscle just like we have to go work out, right? Or just like we have to go walk a block before we can run a mile, right? Sometimes we just have to flex that courage muscle for 10 seconds, for a minute, and then it gets easier and easier and easier to take action. Right. And, you, and you also took, I think it's important to know too because... I think a lot of times people think that it's just something you're just constantly doing, you're taking action. But we have to remember that it took you, and it, as all of us, yeah. years totally. to, to, get to, there. to plant the seed in your mind of this is something that's not working for me. Yeah. And, and, then, my true self, and, right? then, and then opening your mind and your limiting beliefs of what another life could yeah. look like. Yep. And starting yep. that and starting that. And it's not something where you decided that you were going to quit and it was the next day. Yep. Or it wasn't something that you knew that you were not in the right place and then the next day you made a decision, right? It was, you planted the seed. The process, you knew it wasn't working. Um, I just moved here from Los Angeles. Uh, I had been saying I was going to move to Salt Lake for the past at least three years. Um, every time I'd come visit, oh, I'm moving here. Uh, and then it took a very long time <laughs> to get myself on board and my husband on board. And then we, it's, you know, the way that works usually is, you know, what, December. So middle of October, we were like, let's move to Salt Lake in two weeks. And that's what we did. <laughs> that's but, it what took, did. but it took, and it's, it is interesting because so many people are like, yeah, you just did it so quick. It's like, well, I've been thinking yeah. about it. Right. And there is this thing too, and I'm sure you probably know much more about this, about there's this thing of visualizing where you want to be. But part of it is feeling it in your cells and your yes, DNA. As, as soon as you feel it inside, in fact, we emotionally leave a place long before we physically yes. yeah. And so to your point, we start moving on the, on the inner to that next place. Yes. So ladies, what, what is the final thing you want to tell our audience this morning? Oof. Um, I, my advice would be show up as yourself. Mm. Um, and I found in my life when I show up as not myself, my authentic self, I attract people. Um, and I saw this a lot in LA, you know, I thought I want to be friends with that celebrity or that person. And, um, I attracted that, but it didn't resonate with my soul. Yeah. And so I think for me, it's, uh, figure out really who you are, what you love, all the cool things, all the nerdy things, all the things that you think people are going to be scared of and just show up as that. And you will attract th those type of people as well. And those are the type of people you want. Yeah. Well, we have the advice. saying, it's a syrup that good, if, you don't, advice. if you don't do you, you don't get done and the world misses out. And yeah. what we mean by that is that if you're not living the life that you're supposed to be living, like think of what the world would have missed out on of Lynn Christian. If Lynn Christian would have never broken out of that shell, right? Or broken out of that plastic wrap, we would have missed out on so much. And so there's so many people who are playing these roles, but if you don't do you, you don't get done, and truly the world misses out. And so show up as you. And, and you know what? Oftentimes it means that you may have a lot of those people that maybe you thought were your friends are falling off. And you've realized, like, these are not the people I can surround myself with. I mean, sometimes it can mean that lots of things fall off, and that's okay, because the biggest thing that you need to do for yourself is to show up for yourself. That's it. That's great advice. So I'll tag team with these guys. Know yourself, show up, just be yourself, and give yourself a break. If you don't know what that is yet, yeah. discovery is far more powerful than knowing right now. All right, ladies. Can we do like a cheer? Let's do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you say? All right, Rosie.